Hello everyone, today we'll be discussing code accidents. So there are three clinical types of abnormal descent of the umbilical cord by the side of the presenting part. So cord accidents usually consist of three things. So the first one is occult prolapse, cord presentation and cord prolapse. So when we talk about occult prolapse, so the cord is placed by the side of the presenting part and is not felt by the fingers on internal examination. As you can see on the first diagram, it's showing that the cord is present on the side. However, it cannot be felt by the fingers on internal examination. And then this cord presentation, this is whereby the cord is slipped down below the presenting part and is felt lying in the intact bag or amniotic sac of the membrane. So as you can see on the second diagram, cord presentation, so the amniotic sac is intact. However, the cord is presenting before the presenting part. Then in cord prolapse, the cord is lying inside the vagina or outside the vulva following rupture of membranes. So the, the difference between cord presentation and cord prolapse is in cord presentation, the membranes are intact and in cord prolapse, it's after rupture of membranes. The incidence of cord prolapse is about 1 in 300 deliveries and it's mostly confined to Paris women. Incidence is reduced with the increased use of elective caesarean sections in non-cephalic presentations. So the etiology of cord prolapse is usually anything which interferes with perfect adaptation of the presenting part to the lower uterine segment. So this disturbing the ball valve action may favor cord prolapse. Too often more than one factor operates. So we'll discuss the risk factors soon. So the following are the associated factors. So number one, it's small presentations. So the commonest being transverse, which is 5 to 10 percent, and bridge 3 percent, and especially with flex, flex of footling and compound 10 percent presentation, two contracted pelvis, three prematurity, four twins, five hydramnios, six placental factors, such as minor deg degree placenta previa, with marginal insertion of the cord or long cord, iatrogenic, such as low rupture of the membranes or manual rotation of the head, external cephalic version or internal podialic version. Eight stabilizing induction. Diagnosis. So occult prolapse is difficult to diagnose because remember we said that the cord is on the side of the presenting part so it's very difficult to palpate it. So the possibility should be suspected if there is persistence or variable deceleration of fetal heart rate pattern that's detected on continuous electro electronic fetal monitoring. Then cord presentation, the diagnosis is made by feeling the pulsation of the cord through the intact membrane. Then for cord prolapse, the cord is palpated directly by the fingers and its pulsation can be felt if the fetus is alive. Of note is that cord pulsation may cease during uterine contraction, which however returns after the contraction passes off. Temptation to pull down the loop for visualization or unnecessary handling is to be avoided to prevent vasospasm. Fetus may be alive even in the absence of cord pulsation. So a prompt ultrasonogram for cardiac movements or auscultation for fetal heart sounds needs to be done before fetal death is declared. Prognosis. So fetal, the fetus is at risk of anoxia from the moment the cord is prolapsed. The blood flow is occluded either due to mechanical compression by the presenting part or due to vasospasm of the umbilical vessels, due to exposure to cold or irritation when exposed outside the vulva, or as a result of handling. The hazards to the fetus is more in vertex presentation, especially when the cord is prolapsed through the anterior segment of the pelvis or when the cervix is partially dilated. The prognosis, however, is related between, with the interval between its detection and delivery of the baby. And if the delivery is completed within 10 to 30 minutes, the fetal mortality can be reduced to 5 to 10 percent. The overall perinatal mortality is about 15 to 50 percent for cord prolapse. Then maternal risk, so these are incidental due to emergency operative delivery, especially through the vaginal route. Then operative delivery involves the risk of anesthesia, blood loss and infection. 
So anticipation and early detection of a cord, cord accident, basically cord prolapse or cord presentation. So internal examination should be done whenever the membrane rupture prematurely or during labor in all cases of malpresentation. Twins, hydramnios or vertex presentation where the head is not engaged. Surgical induction should preferably be conducted in the operation theater, keeping everything ready for cesarean section. The uterine contraction may be initiated by oxytocin if the head is not engaged prior to low rupture of the membranes. Internal examination both before and after amniotomy should be carried out with cord accident in mind. Then of notice one should exclude cord presentation or occult prolapse in unexplained fetal distress during labor. Management Cord presentation so the aim is to prevent, preserve the membranes and to expedite the delivery. So basically once the diagnosis is made, no attempt should be made to replace the cord as it is not only ineffective but the membranes inevitably rupture leading to prolapse of the cord. If immediate, deli if immediate vaginal delivery is not possible or contraindicated, caesarean section is the best method of delivery. During the time of preparing the patient for operative delivery, she has kept in an exaggerated seams position to minimize cord compression. Then a rare occasion is a multipara with longitudinal lie, having good uterine contractions with the cervix about 3 to 4, which is roughly 7 to 8 cm dilated, without any evidence of fetal distress. So only in this case, watchful expectancy can be adopted till full dilation of the cervix, when the delivery can be completed by forceps or bridge extraction. So management of cord prolapse, so with this one, the protocol is guided by the following. So one is the baby living or dead, two, what's the maturity of the baby, and three, what's the degree of dilatation of the cervix. So if the baby is living, so the definitive treatment is a cesarean section, when the baby is sufficiently mature and is alive. Just prior to making the abdominal incision, however, you need to ensure that you auscultate the fetal heart sound once more. That is to avoid unnecessary caesarean section on a dead bed on a dead baby. The operation should be done quickly up to the delivery of the baby. Two, if immediate self vaginal delivery is possible, if the head is engaged, delivery is to be completed by forceps. Ventus may not be ideal in such circumstances as it takes longer. If it's breech, the delivery is to be completed by breech extraction and in transfer slide, it should be completed by internal version followed by bridge extraction the same also applies in cases where the head is not engaged in second baby of twins three immediate self vaginal delivery is not possible so the first aid management is the aim is to minimize pressure on the cord till, a, till such a time when the patient is prepared for assisted delivery or is transferred to an equipped hospital if an oxytocin infusion is on this should be stopped at this time, IV fluids and oxygen by face mask is given. Then, bladder filling has been done to raise the presenting part of the compressed cord till such a time that patient has delivered either by caesarean section or vaginally. Then, bladder is usually emptied before caesarean delivery. To leave the presenting part of the cord by the gloved fingers introduced into the vagina, the fingers should be placed inside the vagina till definitive treatment is instituted. Then postural treatment, so exaggerated and elevated seams position with a pillow or wedge under the hip or the thigh. Then trendle and back or knee chest position has been traditionally mentioned but may be tiring and irksome to the patient. Then to replace the cord into the vagina to minimize vasospasm due to irritation. Then in case the baby is dead, the labor is allowed to proceed awaiting spontaneous delivery. So that's all about cord accidents. In case you have any question, feel free to comment. Thank you for watching.